Hi guys, this is Mr. V and welcome to Abe's Review Video Topic 1.10, The Energy Flow and 10% Rule. So this is going to be a very short video because this is a pretty simple concept that we'll be able to show you pretty much in just one diagram. So uh, first things to remember is energy cannot be 100% transferred from one trophic level to the next. So you can't put in 100% and get 100% out. Um, this happens universally generally because of the laws of thermodynamics, right? So energy cannot be created or destroyed, right? I tell my kids, it's not the Harry Potter world where we can wave a wand and something will just show up, um, either matter or energy. Um, instead, we have to have something to begin with. And as energy gets transformed, it ends up moving towards entropy, right? So it ends up getting really disorganized. And because it's disorganized, a lot of the times you see that in biological systems as a byproduct of heat, right? So if you look at a rainforest, you can look at a thermal image of a rainforest and it'll produce quite a large amount of heat because of all the energy flowing through that system. It's got a ton of sunlight, it's, there's a lot of producers and those producers are transferring energy. But that doesn't mean, even though it's got a ton of, uh, of energy going through it, that it's using up 100%. Nothing uses 100%. So because of this, every trophic level generally ends up losing 90% of its energy as heat. So you'll see that in the next diagram. And so here it is. Um, when you have producers, they can produce 10,000 kilocalories, right? A kilocalorie, kilo is a unit of the metric system. A calorie is that unit of energy, right? Well, it ends up producing 10,000 calories. It could be a kilocalories. It could be a uh, forest with trees and grass and shrubs but it gets consumed by things like rabbits and bugs, but only a thousand calories are available in that level. So they're eating up to the 10,000 that's available, but they're only able to use 1,000 of it because the rest is lost as heat, right? These red arrows, those heat loss uh, arrows tell us that they're ending up losing quite a bit each time. And so every time you see the numbers, you basically just take off a zero. That's a good little trick you can remember to help you remember this stuff. And then you get animals that eat those, right? Your uh, secondary consumers, they'll eat the rabbit and they'll only have 100 calories available to them. The rest is lost as heat, okay? And then you've got predators of them, those tertiary consumers that only allows for them to have uh, a 10 calorie, kilocalorie availability. So. That's why you don't get more than quaternary uh, level consumers. So you're not going to get five, six, seven, eight levels because there's just not enough energy available. You know, you'd have, and as you notice, the organisms get bigger when they get up here. So that's why something like an, uh, a mammal like ourselves has to eat three meals a day or four meals a day um, to maintain our body mass. But whereas um, rabbits don't have to eat as much. And the thing about it is when you're eating lower on the trophic levels, you can end up having more available to you. So this rabbit has a lot more kilocalories available that they can eat versus the eagle, which has very little available and has to eat more and more often. So um, that's kind of the big reason as to why that ends up being uh, limited in levels. You don't see pyramids with six, seven, eight levels because there's not enough energy uh, available to them. So that was a short one. Hopefully this uh, will help. And this is a, a quick resource on the laws of thermodynamics. So hopefully that was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.